G'day, and welcome to another Space Engineers tutorial. Today, we're going to take a look at parachutes. These have been very recently added to the vanilla game, and there's something that's been around as a mod for quite some time, but I've never really properly looked into how they function. So I thought this was a great time to do that. We can have a quick look at what they have as options in the terminal. They've got the usual options up the top, and then they've got an open and close state, an auto deploy option, and an auto deploy height. This height is defined as the height above sea level of the planet, which on the Earth-like is roughly the level of the ice lakes. So if we set this to a thousand meters, set auto deploy on, when we close this parachute, it should close and then reopen because we're beneath that ceiling. And thankfully that did work. If we set this down to, let's say, 50 meters. Leave auto deploy on, set the other one to the same. Ish. And then we go and close both of these. We should start plummeting towards the ground and these should open just before we hit the ground. I hope. There we go. And that'll drift us safely down for a nice gentle landing. I have a whole bunch of testing rigs here as there are many different aspects of parachutes that I wanted to look at. The first rig we're going to look at is actually up in space. The reason to start these tests in space was I'd like to know where the parachutes would actually function. Whether they're defined by planetary gravity, whether they're defined by atmosphere or a combination of both. So the easy way to test that first is see if they work in vacuum. To rule this out, let's turn off our inertial dampeners, let's start moving in this direction and then we'll try and open the parachute. And you can see that nothing is happening. The parachute does not function in vacuum. So that's good to know. Next test is does it function in planetary gravity still in a vacuum? So let's jump over to the moon and we'll have a look at how things work there. Down here on the moon we've got gravity, but we do not have any atmosphere. So will the parachutes work? We'll unlock our landing gear, we'll take off. Currently our inertial dampeners are off, so we should just start slowing down and then falling. Let's speed up the process a little bit. And then open our parachutes. And still, no action. So that's not going to work. Will they work in the very high reaches of the atmosphere? Right now, I'm sitting about 16 kilometers above the planet's surface. So if we pop this ship in and then hop in and turn off our inertial dampeners, we'll start being pulled down by the planet's gravity. We've now got oxygen. So will the parachute open? We are falling towards the planet. We have oxygen, so the parachute should be able to unfurl but it doesn't. We are 16,000 meters above the ground and the parachute does not work. And this is where there was a little hint about where these would work before. This auto deploy height, that is actually the maximum height of deployment for a parachute. Between 10,000 meters and 3,000 meters, the parachute behaves a bit differently to what it does below 3,000 meters. And this can create some interesting results if you end up using it above a mountain. So let's move over towards a mountain and we'll do this test over there. We're now 7,000 meters up. So we're below that 10,000 ceiling. Our parachute should open. And it does. What you'll notice is the parachute doesn't open very broadly. It looks a bit more like a drogue chute right now. It's slowing us down a little bit, but not as much as it does when it's lower. And this will be a problem if we run into a mountain too soon, because we're gonna have to get below 3000 meters before this thing actually opens up. 
and that's 3,000 meters from sea level. If the air isn't dense enough, we're not going to actually get any meaningful benefits from this parachute. So that means you're going to need to be careful about where you land when you're using parachutes. Right now we're plummeting towards the rocks at 100 meters a second, we'll open our drogue chute. And then, as we pass the 3000 threshold, we should see it pop open wide. Oh dear. Why isn't that happening? That's because the altitude meter I'm using is actually wrong. It's my altitude above the surface, not above sea level. I'm actually below the height of all of these mountains and this still hasn't opened up widely. I don't know if it's going to before I hit the ground. There we go. So I'm 500 meters above the rocks and it's only just opened now. I am deep in this valley. This parachute would have done nothing if I was anywhere near the peaks of those mountains. I would have smashed into the ground and been ripped to pieces. So pick your landing sites carefully. Or get lucky like I did. And on to more testing. We're going to look at a whole lot of different aspects of these parachutes, including the weight they can carry, the directions they work, and things like that. Let's first have a look at the block itself. If we bring one up on our HUD here, you can see that there's a conveyor port on the bottom and there's the access doors on the top. The sides, nice and pretty, but all the same. That conveyor port on the bottom is important in survival so that you can get parachute canvases into the block. Those canvases are made at the assembler just like other components. In creative mode, we do not need to have them attached to any particular conveyor system. They will just function. But will they function if those doors are against a solid block? Or even more so, if the block is entirely covered with armor pieces? Let's have a look. First one, with it vertical. Will the parachute open? Let's turn on our thrusters. Let's put our parachute block on the hotbar. Get a bit of height. Turn off our thrusters and open the parachute. And we can see the parachute's working normally. No problems at all. Will the parachute work with everything covered? Let's turn, every, turn our thrusters on, jump up to a height, turn them off, open our parachute. And we can see that it opens regardless of what's in the way. And it functions. Handy to know, we can actually hide these within our ships. So, if you don't have a spot on the outside of your ship that will work with the parachutes, at least at the moment, you could put them on the inside and they'll work just fine. Also what this means is if you manage to sneak onto an enemy ship that's flying in atmosphere, you can build a parachute hatch wherever you like, have it auto deploy, and really make it hard for them to fly. The next thing to look at is how much weight one parachute can safely allow to land. If we jump in this, we can see that it's about 10,000 kilograms and it is safely able to land with the parachute. If we jump up to 12,500, we can see that our speed will be around 10 meters when we hit the ground, which from our collision testing, we know we should be safe. And there we go. Nice, safe landing. Hop out of that one. And let's go up to a higher mass. This one, it's 15,000. Let's turn on our thrusters. And just in case this one doesn't go so smoothly, let's move back a bit. So we don't land on our other testing rigs. Again, up to 100 meters. Turn on our thrust, uh, Turn off our thrusters and open our chute. I was a bit slow on that one. But still... Slow enough that we're safe. And that's at 15,000 kilos. If I landed a bit awkwardly on that one, I suspect that wouldn't have ended so nicely. So let's jump up to 20,000. Just like the others, let's open our chute, turn off our thrusters and fall way down to the ground. And we're going about 13 meters a second with a fairly heavy ship. And oh dear. Yep, that definitely didn't work well. We might have landed okay and survived if we'd been perfectly flat, 
but even a little bit off kilter and it's all mess. In my testing previously, I found that the zone where things went badly was somewhere around the 15 to 20,000 kilogram of mass for one parachute. So, what's a way to make a heavy ship safer? We can chuck a second parachute on it. With a second parachute, you'll get a similar amount of reduction per chute, but each extra chute will do slightly less than the previous ones. This is because of the way that the Space Engineer's engine calculates impact force. The more mass you have, the more force you have on that impact. So if you think of an example of a ship of 20,000 kilograms, you might assume that two parachutes will slow it down to the same speed as one parachute would slow down a 10,000 kilo ship, and you'd be right. But the force of that impact would be higher on the 20,000 kilogram ship than on the 10,000 kilogram ship because of the mass involved. And we can see this with the 20,000 kilo ship. So with two parachutes, we're going nine meters a second. We should be able to safely land this thing, but we can't. When we were going 9 meters a second with only a 10,000 kilogram ship, we were fine. Nearly every time we had a safe landing. If we double the mass and keep the same speed, we hit a lot harder. We've seen that small ships can take about 10,000 kilograms per parachute. Large ships, they can take a lot more, but they need to be going a lot slower before they hit the ground. Otherwise, you will end up losing parts. With this 100,000 kilogram ship, we can take it up to 100 meters. There we go. Open our chute. Open. There we go. Opened. And we slowly drift down. We're only going 5.8 meters a second. But this thing is heavy. So that could be enough to do some damage, but I think it should be safe. And it is. At 100,000 kilograms with one chute, it's been safe in most of my tests. This one, however, which as we can see from the HUD and from the little LCD I put on the front, it is 150,000 kilograms. And we were going 5.8 meters per second before, we're going about 1.3 meters a second faster. We'll try and use our gyros to make this a flat landing. And with a flat landing, we're safe. Now, if you land awkwardly with this thing, it's not going to end well. And I'll demonstrate that now. Turn off our thrusters, open our chute. And we'll just let it list backwards like this and land on those rear thrusters. And our ship is torn to shreds. This brings us on to an interesting point about these parachutes. And something that the talisman is going to be useful to demonstrate. How do we work out where to place them so that we can get as flat a landing as possible, so that we get as safe a landing as possible? We don't want to have to use our gyros to try and figure figure out and fiddle and make the landing as flat as possible, we want the parachutes to do most of the work. So we go into the terminal, we go into info, and we can turn on this, which is show center of mass. Turn that indicator on, and then you can see in the center of my screen, this yellow marker, which looks like a cross in three dimensions. If we hop out, we still see this on any ships that we are nearby. If I float down to these ones, it'll pop into view. So you don't have to turn this on individually per ship. It will just turn on for all of them when you turn it on and turn off for all of them when you turn it off. So back with the talisman, I chose this one because it's got a bit of an odd shape. It can be difficult to work out just by looking at it where the center of mass might be. Conveniently, I managed to somehow luck it out and the center of mass is pretty much spot on over the cockpit. It's slightly to one side, but we can't do much about that. The talisman weighs 370,000 kilograms, so we're going to want at least four of these parachutes. We're going to place six, I think. So what we'll do is we'll place 
So let's place five parachutes. We'll place one there. One there. These are both equally distant from the marker in this direction. But also pretty much in line with the marker in this direction. Next up, we'll place two in front of the marker. So that's one block in front. If we use the chutes in this configuration, the talisman would tip so that its rear thruster would probably hit the ground first. We don't want that. So to balance off these two thrusters with these two parachutes with another parachute, we can place a single one two blocks backwards. We can place the parachutes in this configuration. We have enough chutes for a ship that weighs 370,000 kilograms. We have two parachutes that are dead in line with our center of mass marker. We have two parachutes that are a single block in front of the center of mass marker. These are balanced left to right, but we need something to balance them with the front to back aspect of them. And that means we're going to need either two parachutes a single block back from the center of mass marker, or one parachute two blocks back. That's because that single parachute, by being twice as far back, will create twice as much force balancing out those two that are at the front. And we can test that and see how close that is. If we look at the center of mass marker, it does sit a little towards the rear and a little towards the left. So we should expect a little bit of listing in that direction. And there we go. We do list a little bit to the left and a little bit to the rear. We expected that. That's okay. Otherwise, it's pretty well balanced, so we don't need to use our gyroscope to make this a level landing. That rear landing gear is going to take most of the force, but we'll see if it survives. It didn't, but I think everything else might have. Let's have a look. Hopefully we haven't lost too much else. Especially since the rear thruster is big and the refinery is back there as well. Ah, oh, perfect. All we lost was the landing gear. I'd say for an emergency landing device, losing one landing gear, that's a pretty good result. This next test is going to use this rather odd shaped rig. We've got a yellow ship and a pink ship, they're connected by merge blocks. The yellow ship has a large knife and a whole bunch of Gatling guns. And the reason for that is I want to confirm that the parachutes are completely unaffected by blocks and by weapons. I'm not going to be shooting at the parachute block itself, I'm going to be shooting at the parachute. And I'm pretty sure it has no effect. So let's turn off the thrusters on the pink ship. Let's open the parachute and disconnect the merge block. And we can see the pink ship is flying. So we can see flying through here has no effect on the parachute whatsoever. Let's see if our guns make any difference. Lots and lots of shooting. Lots and lots of nothing. These parachutes have no collision box and have no... are completely unaffected by what is around them. We now know approximately the amount of weight that can be saved by one of these parachutes in a 1G world. We know that the parachutes have no physical interaction with the world around them other than slowing down the ship they're attached to. But how much can they slow down? This next test is looking to see whether parachutes will fail if they're put under enough stress. What I've got here is a rig with eight large hydrogen thrusters, eight small hydrogen thrusters, and a single parachute set dead center of them so that nothing gets tilted out of whack. Let's turn on our thrusters and demonstrate how quickly this thing can accelerate. We'll accelerate in three, two, one, go. And we are up to 100 meters a second in no time. So let's open our chute and let's see what happens. Chute's open and we're dragging, we're dragging, we're accelerating. We're probably going to reach 3000 meters before we get up to above 50 meters a second, I think. But we are able to accelerate and overcome this parachute. 
you can see that the parachute doesn't seem to have any particular tolerance. It will work no matter how much force and stress I put this thing under by pulling away from it. Also, it's going to work no matter what direction you're heading in. I can shoot down towards the ground. I can shoot up towards the sky. The parachute is always going to operate in the exact opposite direction to what my heading is. And it will do this to the same extent, regardless of the direction. And that means... You can do something quite cool with them. That means... You can use them as drag chutes. What we have here is a rather awkward looking car that can get up to some pretty solid speeds. It has two parachutes at the rear. So let's see what we could use them for. In drag races, you've got parachutes to slow you down when you get up to too high a speed because brakes just won't function. And in Space Engineers, you can end up getting in situations like that as well. To make your cars a bit more survivable, oh dear, you can, just before you run into a cliff, open your chutes and slow you down. There is no way I could have slowed down that quickly without the chutes. So in some ways it lets you be more reckless. Same can be said if I accidentally jumped over a cliffside. The parachutes might be enough to allow me to have a safe landing without any significant damage. Oh dear. And if you lose control of your vehicle and you don't like doing permanent power slides on ice, you can use your chutes, stop, correct, and move on. The last thing I want to look at is how these things work in survival. So we'll jump over to a survival mode world and have a final look at that. All of the tests so far have been done in creative. That's fine because all of the tests so far work the same in creative and survival, but survival has an extra limitation. In survival, you'll need to go to your assembler and build these things called canvases. So let's build 10 of those. They need a little bit of silicon and a little bit of iron. We'll take those, put them in our inventory. Let's go build some parachutes onto our miner. The color you make a parachute affects the color of the lower ring around the parachute. So let's make this something nice and bright and let's say yellow. As we looked at before, the parachutes have a conveyor port on the bottom. We've got an open conveyor port here, but that's behind the sorter. We know that that won't work. We've got two open conveyor ports at the front. So if we put one on this side, and weld that up, and one on this side, and weld it up, those two should function normally. If we had another conveyor port, we could add these somewhere else as well. Sadly, we don't. And that means I'm going to place the final one on top of the ship. This will allow us to access the conveyor port on the bottom of the parachute and allow us to manually load those canvases. We'll put the rest of them into the ship's inventory so they can go directly to the other parachutes. And yeah, I'm gonna have to lift the ship up so that we can get into that. We'll pop them in there and they'll be able to be reloaded. We've got two in there, so let's go with eight. So we've got ten there. And if we have a look at our parachutes, we've got one in each. What we have here is our mining ship with two parachutes connected up to the conveyor system, a bunch of parachute canvases in the conveyor system, and a single parachute on top of the ship that's isolated from the conveyor system but currently has a single canvas in it. When we're in creative mode, we could just open and close these things at will. However, we can't do that in survival. Every time we open one of these, we use up a canvas. So if we turn off our thrusters and we open these three parachutes, you can see we get three with yellow rims around their bottom. And they'll slowly drift us towards the ground. If we turn our thrusters back on, and we close all of these now. If we go into our inventory, you'll see that the parachutes now, there's canvases in two of them, 
There's none in the third. That's the one that's not connected to the system. So that one shouldn't open. If we turn off our thrusters again, we try and open our chutes. This time we only get two. If you can, you will want to connect your parachutes up to your conveyor system so you don't have to reload them by hand. But if that's too difficult and you're really only using these rarely, you can probably get away with having them just filled by hand anyway. If we have a closer look at them, we can see how many parachutes they can actually hold. The parachute hatches themselves can hold 10 canvases, so you've got 10 uses if you're going to be manually reloading them. That's not too bad. So that does make it a viable option. There you have it. That's parachutes. That's all the tests that I managed to come up with so far. If you've got more ideas of things that should be tested, I would love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments. And if there's enough different things to test, I am definitely up for a part two on parachutes. As always, there's plenty more to come, so I'll see you then.